What is going on YouTube? Out here on Lake Dardanelle doing a little frog fishing. Had my camera with me, so I thought I would uh, throw out some tips for you. You know, uh, a lot of people like to frog fish. It's a fun way to catch them. But there are things that, you know, if you if you watch the FLW Tour, if you watch the Bassmaster Elite Series, you know, a lot of the guys that are kind of diehard frog fishermen that they throw a frog, you know, no matter what, they're going to have one tied on. A lot of those guys, you know, they, they do little tweaks, they do things to it to kind of match that frog to the condition. So I just want to give you a few uh, quick, easy tips for, you know, if you're if you're diving into frog fishing for the first time, just things that I recommend that you do to a new out-of-the-box frog. So, number one, when you're going to get a frog out of the package, and this is, you know, if, if you guys watching, if y'all are experienced tournament guys y'all know where i'm going with this if not and you're new to frog fishing this is to me this is number one so you can see the how long the legs are that's no good that's no good so what you want to do is you actually want to trim those you want to cut them off and i cut mine pretty short like i'll cut them you know about right there i actually have one i've already trimmed and this one could be a little shorter honestly and something you'll notice so i, I cut the legs off but you notice how one is significantly longer than the other. So what that's gonna allow you to do when you cut those legs, it's gonna allow that frog to walk better. So where, you know, if you're throwing it around like a lay down or lily pads, uh, they're really good on bed and bass. So you can kind of twitch it just like a walk, like a spook or something. And it's actually gonna stay right over the top of that bed. Uh, so definitely like as soon as I get a frog, you know, before I ever throw it, I'm cutting those legs off. And generally a good rule of thumb is the thicker the cover, so if you're getting getting into like grass and slop and stuff, I like the legs shorter. Sometimes I'll cut them all the way down to just like, you know, a hat, just tiny. So if I'm fishing like scum, I mean, I'll almost take the legs completely off of it. All right, number two, and I really like this, this tip right here. Um, days that maybe it's cloudy, muddy, or there's like a, a little bit of wind. You know, you're fishing a, a windy bank and maybe you've missed a few fish or they've missed the bait. Uh, better yet and so you know I think is what happens is because a frog is silent for the most part you know there's no built-in rattles in the majority of frogs so I think what happens when you get that chop on the water that it's kind of uh, it's harder for them to get a bead on it so what I like to do is actually take a rattle if you can hear that and you have two options here so this one's actually a big rattle um, this one I'm not associated with these people at all venom lures I guess they call it an unbreakable worm rattle you can see that so, and this is just what I was able to dig out. I got all kinds of different rattles. So you can use like a little bitty glass rattle and do this and you can see there's a hole right in the back. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and you, so you can either take these rattles. Now this one, it's a pretty big rattle, so I, I don't think I could do it, um, but you can actually put it right in the back of that. Let's see if you can see that guys, see that hole there. Anyway, so you can squeeze it right in there. If you can't do that, you can take a box cutter, slice right down the top of it, slide your rattle in, super glue it up, works just fine. Because what that does, it just gives your frog just a little bit of noise to when you're twitching it. It's right over, you know, and that's something that a lot of guys are not gonna take the time to do. They're just, they're just, they're just not gonna do it, period. So something else, you know, that everybody else, um, one of the biggest complaints, I guess, you'll hear from a new frog fisherman um, man, I, I, I get awesome blow ups, but I just don't, I just don't catch the fish. You know, I never hook them up. So the, the key to this, the key, and I, I know people have heard it and I, I, I'm including this one because it's so important. So many people don't do it. And it's just, you know, it's always the one that gets off is always the biggest one of the day. It never fails. So on these hooks, on a frog hook, you absolutely have to, you know, after you've cut the legs and everything, take your pliers. Let's see if I can get this a good angle. You want to take your pliers. And you just bend those hooks out. Just work them until they bend. What, how I like it to end up, I've already done this one, so I don't want to tweak on it real, real hard. But what I like to do, a lot of times these hooks, if you look at them, they're actually like almost bent down into the frog um, when you first get it. I like them to have just a little bit of upward cant to them. Just a tiny, tiny amount. Um, and you know, equipment is, <laughs> equipment's a big one on those too. Um, having the right rod absolutely bait casting equipment i say that and people probably laugh uh but there are i've seen it happen spinning rods on frogs and that's generally not uh not something that i recommend but you, i like to throw mine on a 734 uh, i use pal uh, but a 734 or something like that because you can you can skip it and you, you can work it real good some people i wouldn't recommend going up there to 76 77 any eh, not for me 73 
734 um, is definitely what I, I recommend there. And then, you know, I want to, so there's two, like I've had both of these frogs here. You can see one is what you call a popping frog and one's what you uh, would just be a, your normal hollow body frog. Um, different situations call for different ones. A lot of people, you know, they just kind of pick one out. They don't really have a reason uh, why. My kind of default, now sometimes I'll switch it up, but my kind of default for what I want to do, um, the popping frog, for me, that's going to get thrown more on, you can't really see it, but if it's kind of like sparse cover on the bank, you know, maybe there, there's just a lay down or a small patch of grass. And the reason is, is I feel like a, a popping frog, I can walk it better. You know, I'll trim the legs up, like I've said, to where they're completely different. I trim them up to where I can get it beside stuff really just keep it in that strike zone over and over and over just keeping it walking back and forth right there beside whatever i'm trying to uh, target your regular hollow body frog um that kind of comes everything else for me i really like that more you know if you get into like a water willow bank grass things like that because this popping frog what happens is that front cup keeps it from walking real well and it just doesn't I don't know. It, it, I, some people like it in the grass. I don't. I always like a frog to be walking as much as possible. Once you get into the grass, the regular hollow body is going to be better um, for that. All right, and tip number five. It, this is one that a lot of people probably don't do. Um, I like to make a frog heavier sometimes. Um, you know, the, a lot of times you you can't quite skip them as well. You know, they need just a little bit more weight or you wanna, you wanna change how they sit in the water, you can add small weights to them, um, 16th, 30 seconds of an ounce, and, and all that's gonna do is just make it sit a little lower in the water. You can, you know, like I said before, sometimes you can squeeze a little lead bullet weight right up there, sometimes you have to cut it right down the back, you know, and I'm talking a tiny, small incision. That's not, it's not a big deal. And what, like I said, what that does is it'll actually make the rear end of the frog sit lower. You know, that's where it's naturally weighted anyways. And so it'll sit lower and what that'll let it allow it to do, well, you can twitch it and walk it in one spot a little better because it's not gonna be riding up in the water. You're just gonna be twitching it kind of in one spot. Um, you gotta be careful if you get up too much weight, it's gonna be sinking. You don't obviously want that, um, but like a 16th of an ounce, you'd be surprised how much, how much further you can cast it with just a 16th of an ounce. Um, to help and like I said it completely changes the action that's one thing that a lot of people aren't going to take the time to mess with they're just not going to do um, so these guys these are just quick five five tips I guess they're five I didn't count I'm assuming I'll we'll probably label it as five uh, five tips on how I modify my frogs and what I do with them um, it works for me I'm sure y'all have a bunch of other tips, a lot of things I miss. Feel free to drop those down there in the comment section, like and subscribe, or just do what everybody else on the internet does and comment about how wrong I am and all the simple tips that I miss because you know it's the internet and that's generally what people do. Anyways guys, appreciate your time watching. I hope these tips helped y'all out. Comment down below, like and subscribe. See y'all next time.